Hello. In this demonstration, we will compare how could you do cloud type management in WebSphere application server and JBoss application server. Obviously, it does not have to be cloud. It could be just a collection of different servers that you have in your environment. But very often, you may find yourself in a need to create new clusters or add additional servers to existing clusters or perhaps create totally new environment. Uh, in the previous demonstration, we already showed you how to uh, update certain properties of the configuration in WebSphere and JBoss. In this demonstration, we will show you how to create a cluster from scratch, how to create new servers and add them to the cluster, uh, and also look into the application deployment. And as we have discussed previously, uh, it would be nice if in production environment we could do all of that automatically uh, using a script as a preferred option. Not using manual file editing, not using administrative GUI, but using the repeatable scripts uh, that we know work, that we tested, uh, and this is what we will attempt. So let's see how we can do this in WebSphere. Uh, we'll create again new cluster, add new servers, and deploy application into the cluster. And we will repeat it for multiple JVMs, and we will see how WebSphere and JBoss compare. Now, we have Red Hat Enterprise Linux with WebSphere application server installed. Uh, and I have created a directory, and you could see I have uh, file run.sh. And this file simply runs wsadmin script, uh, passes the command line parameter, the script itself, the Jiton script. Uh, and I did put the user ID and password, obviously not a good practice to put it in a file. Now, I also have installed uh, WebSphere Rational Application Developer. And this one comes for free with WebSphere. This is Application Assembly Toolkit. Uh, you get this Eclipse environment with Jiton editing capabilities out of the box, free of charge, so your developers can use it. Uh, and I created a really simple script. Uh, here it is, uh, create app cluster script. Uh, so first of all, I include the wsadminlib.py. So this is the library of scripts that WebSphere provides out of the box. This library of scripts has dozens and dozens of different pre-built functions that you can use easily and simply to invoke certain configurational uh, um, actions on WebSphere. So what I did here, I defined just a variable and I said in this variable, uh, on this particular node, I will create server clustered server one on the chocolate node and on the caramel node, I will create cluster server 2. So obviously, if you run this in production, you probably would pass in some of the parameters as dynamic input. So you could have any number of nodes, perhaps 20 different machines where web series installed, but you don't have cluster and you do not have the server. So you'll just pass the parameter or you can even dynamically navigate through the list of all of the nodes and on every node create a couple of uh, servers. Uh, so again, I defined this statically uh, just for the sake of a demonstration, but this could be dynamic list and it could have uh, 60 servers if you wanted to. I also didn't define the cluster name, uh, the application name. This is a test session dot war file. This is just a really simple uh, war file with single servlet application name, uh, deployment options. And the first thing to do is just a single line in Jitone uh, in WebSphere. Create cluster, give it a cell name and give it a cluster name. So this single line creates a new cluster in WebSphere. Now I have two more lines in Jiton to create servers for those for that cluster. So I just iterate over the pre-built function list of new cluster servers. So uh, this is my uh, list of servers. So I iterate over those servers and for every server, I create that server with that name, uh, cluster name, node name and server name. So this will add new servers. You could create multiple servers on the same node. So you could stack JVMs on the same machine or you could create multiple cluster members on multiple machines. 
Now I also have single line in Jiton to install my application into the cluster. So I give it the file name, which is a test session.war. Uh, in this case, I don't need to provide the server list because um, I will be deploying into the cluster. And my application deployment options, I only have one option. I want to give specific name to my application. So that's it. One line to create cluster, two lines to create and add servers to the cluster, and one line to install application. Now all I have to do it now is save the application and use pre-built function start all servers in the cluster. I also have the WebSeer administrative console open so let's just take a look what we have here. Um, right now I do not have any clusters. I do not have any well I clustered servers. Server 1 and Server 5 are not clustered servers. Uh, as far as my applications, let's see what I have. I don't have any applications deployed. So let's say you are administrator and you are experiencing the high volume of requests or perhaps you need to provision a new environment for the test or for production um, and you need to quickly create new cluster and deploy that application into the cluster. So what you can do now is run the script run.sh and I will just pass the parameter create app cluster. Uh, so let's run the script and see what happens. This is um, again Jiton script using WebSeer administrative tooling. Uh, first it's going to connect to the WebSeer deployment manager uh, using the user ID and password that I provided earlier. Uh, you can also uh, provide it at the deployment time using the interactive uh, window where you can type in user ID and password if you did not provide it as part of the uh, command line. So now you could see we're executing create a new cluster, creating new servers. So it's going to create two new servers. Now deploying the application into the cluster. Uh, this is application deployment. Uh, just some security permissions. Now it's saving the configuration. Uh, so created a cluster, created uh, servers, deployed application, now just save configuration uh, in WebSphere XML based files uh, and that's done. Now need to start servers in the cluster. So starting servers, um, again this is a script, right? I just put the print statements in Jiton here. So now starting all servers in the cluster, this command will start them sequentially so it's actually gonna wait um, so if I had to start, for example, if I had 60 servers, then this will wait. I can also write, uh, use a different function so that servers will start asynchronously. So if I, running, if I run it on 20 machines, I don't need to wait for a uh, server to finish the startup on one machine before I start it on another machine. I can just start them asynchronously. Uh, so that will be a couple of extra lines of code for demonstration simplicity sake I just kept it uh, to one line and then I'm starting them uh, synchronously one after another. Uh, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, so it seems like the server on this machine has started uh, and on this machine I think it's gonna start any minute now. Alright so now the server on the caramel node is being started. Uh, so let's give it a couple of minutes. Uh, in fact, it's going to take less than a minute to start the server on that machine. So in the meantime, uh, let's go back and take a look at our uh, configuration. So the, the fastest way to uh, refresh the workspace. Uh, we'll see what applications we have. WebSeer Enterprise application. So you can see that test web application is now deployed and you can see this is being started. Partial start because the server 2 is being started right now as we speak. Uh, as far as servers, let's take a look at our servers. Uh, we have cluster server 1, cluster server 2, caramel node, chocolate node. And let's take a look at our clusters. Uh, we have cluster 1. Uh, now let's test a application uh, on the chocolate node. So this is a session tracking test application. Uh, seems to work fine. Now let's test it on a caramel node uh, and 
it does work on a caramel node. So this worked. Uh, the script obviously finished uh, with success. Now let's say we don't longer need that configuration. What do we do now? If we don't need that configuration, then we can just write a simple script. And that script will use one line to delete the application and one line to delete all of the servers. And now we can run it. So let's run this script delete servers. And again, I did provide the user ID and admin, um, user ID and password. Uh, so what it's going to do now, we'll just go and delete the application, delete all of the clusters and servers defined, and we will no longer see that in our configuration. Uh, so it's connecting to the deployment manager. So let's give it a few seconds to start working, deleting the application. First it has to stop the application and then uninstall that application. Now it needs to stop first stop and then delete all of the servers and delete the cluster. We'll give it a few seconds to complete the task. In the meantime, while it's still working, I will just show you the pre-built function. It's called wsadminlib uh, that has a lot of different pre-built functions uh, provided out of the box with WebSphere. Uh, so you can just use it as a script library uh, or you can write your own using WebSphere administrative command. So you could see you can delete server cluster by name, create cluster, you could stop all server clusters, delete all server clusters, uh, you can create URI groups, um, you can delete servers of specific type, you can create servers of different types uh, based on templates and so forth, you can list servers, uh, you can create and start servers, uh, and there are many, many different pre-built functions that you could use, or you can just use uh, wsadmin scripting uh, directly yourself. Uh, now let's take a look. All right, so it did finish the work, so we deleted it. Now let's see if our application works. Unable to connect. And that's a good thing because we removed the configuration and those servers do not longer appear. Uh, so now what we can do we can use another script, for example, list resources, and that will just iterate over list of applications, list of servers, and list of clusters. So let's just run that script and see what we have in our configuration. List resources. Now list all installed applications, and this should be none because we don't have any list all application servers. I think we only have two and those are non-clustered. And list all clusters, no clusters. So what we have here, we, we did do other tasks on the bottom of this table in the previous demonstration. Updating HTTP listener ports, JVM parameters, HTTP session timeout and so forth. Now we did these three tasks and as you have seen for a single JVM or in fact even for multiple JVMs it takes a couple of lines in Jiton to deploy application, create cluster, create servers. When you run it for 60 JVMs um, it's gonna be very fast because it's a scripted deployment so when you would like to provision that kind of environment, new cluster with new application and custom properties for 20 machines in your cloud with 60 JVMs, the entire task is probably going to take 15 minutes, maybe less, maybe more, depending on the speed of your servers.